Yo, what's going on guys? This is Mia and welcome to my Alter Guys deck profile. So I'm not really making a combo video because there's no like combo to showcase. There are a few like small combos that you can show in a way like the flow of execution. That's like the correct term, but not really combo. And it can't really make a like a large video. So it would just kind of be a waste of time for everyone who watches it. But uh, yeah, anyways, before we start, uh, just a friendly reminder to like, comment and subscribe because it motivates me to keep making more videos. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. So let's just jump right into it. So I'm only playing one Conqueror because you really don't need to play too many. I mean, if you draw this with no Altergeist, it does nothing. And on its own, it does nothing. So yeah, it's just don't just assume that you're gonna break. That's always the best theory behind like deck building is not to play cards that like rely on like other cards like too much. In a way, this could actually just be dropped from the deck completely. It's just that one cool thing that you can do with Conqueror is actually special summon it off a of faker to negate like a continuous spell or trap, for example. But, like that's pretty good. So it's like kind of one of the reasons why Conqueror will always kind of have to be played in the deck. So yeah. 3 Marionetter because there is this and Melusik for your good normal summons. Obviously Melusik is better because it's a starter, but Marionetter is the most explosive one after turn 1. And on turn 1 it's alright, I mean it gets you protocol or manifestation, but it's not too good. And I know there's like Haunted Rocks which allows you to trigger Faker on turn 1, but the odds of having like Haunted Rocks plus Faker are just so incredibly low that most more often than not it's gonna be a brick, so not really uh, too much of a fan. I mean, yeah, you could kind of play it, but I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Haunted Rocks. Could be considered. It should at least be in my idea section, though, but yeah, I guess. Anyways, uh, Multi-Faker, of course, now that, that now that it's finally a 3, obviously you're playing 3. Don't uh, don't look at this, by the way. This is a old ban list, but obviously the card is a 3 now. For the hand traps, I play 9, so 3 Ash, 3 Crow, and 3 Infinite. Just because I think that they are the best hand traps for now, because I think Nibiru is just completely awful to main deck. But Ash is like the most flexible, it's good against control decks. DD Crow is very good against Eldritch, like very good. And Infinite is just like... It's not even that it's a powerful hand trap, it's just that it's easy to activate. It's not once per turn, and doesn't lose to Call by the Grave or Appaloosa or Rafflesia, so... Well, no, actually, it definitely loses to Rafflesia, but I mean, if you use it on Rafflesia, but if you use it on something else, then they can't just Grave Hole and Negate, because, you know, it's not a monster effect that activates in the hand, it's just, like, a trap that you're activating, uh, just like that, so yeah. Uh, to Silk Quiltus, of course, the reason why I play pe pe people always play 2 and not 1 or 3 is because if you play 1, even if you draw, like, Faker, you can't really summon Silk Quiltus, so that's kind of a brick. And if you play 3, I mean, well, you're always drawing it, so it's a huge brick. So 2 is like the perfect in-between, but at the same time, you could kind of argue you can play 1 and 1 Conquery, you know, because worst case, Faker just summons another Conquery, you just summon Melusik for resources, and then you can play, you know, like, another Interruption instead. So you have, like, less of the monster heavy hands. That could make sense, but when you're playing Pokuri, it's not, like, it's not too big of a deal, because... Well, Curie, it has to, like, you have to draw, like, another Altergeist card for it to combo well with it, so... That's, like, kind of the reason why you don't really mind playing, like, a bit more Altergeist right now. Even though, you know, I mean, what is this count? Like, 15 Altergeist, I think? Yeah, 15. Yeah, it's kind of a high number, but whatever, it's it's not uh, too bad. And also, this deck is pretty much, like, at full power now. In the TCG, I mean, it's 100% full power. Like, every single card is at 3. Faker and Spoofing at 3. The OCG, I'm pretty sure... Both cards are limited or something like that, or maybe spoofing is semi-limited. I forgot. Uh, it's just um, Altergeist cards are also like a roller coaster. Obviously not on the level of Destiny, Destiny Hero Malicious. That one is like disgusting. <laughs> I think it went in like two and three, and then two and three, like at least ten times. Like something stupid. It's it's not even funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um... One for one, I mean, you play two level one monsters, but, I mean, three, but... <laughs> uh, Melusik is obviously the one that you always want to summon. And, uh, I mean, it has a real effect and it gets you under your, in your Altergeist engine. And now that you're playing three Pokuri as well, there's always just more stuff that you can discard. And Pokuri is just like a free card that you get back to your hand, which is cool. So, yeah, I guess the discard cost is not uh, too bad. And, like, I mean, even though it does, like, send one monster from your hand to the grave, which is kind of expensive for a trap deck, the fact that it gets you Faker is, like, it already refunds you the card that you lost. So, even if you discard an Ash, for example, like a duplicate hand trap, it's not bad, because you're getting, like, 
far ahead on your engine and on your interruptions, you're getting one more interruption, so obviously it's logical. Uh, three pot of indulgence, I'm not going to explain this. Uh, by the way, if people keep complaining about pot of indulgence since every single deck, honestly, just grow up. Like, seriously, the card's obviously getting reprinted, so I really don't understand why people are always looking for, like, budget alternatives for a card that's getting reprinted. Makes no sense. But yeah. Uh, Manif and... I play one Manif and one Protocol. I really hate playing two Protocols. I think it makes zero sense in Altergeist. Because obviously the card is, once again, it's not that great. And the fact that it's easily settable is like... I, I really don't understand why you think you go into like as many like in one, one game. Like Maybe you're doing something wrong and you can't just kill your opponent. But no, I feel like it's really easy to kill your opponent before you need to like n like require a second protocol. And obviously it kind of falls under the category of like kind of bricks and like you're gonna say like oh yeah you play one protocol but with uh, one skill drain like it makes no sense but the thing is skill drain is just su like such a high impact card that it's like not that bad i mean in a way you can kind of cut skill drain it's just that by the way in case you're wondering the reason why i play skill drain is because protocol also affects like it affects you like even if you're trying to negate yourself it's still like like they're still unaffected by being like negated so that's why these two actually have a lot of synergy, but once again, if you don't really like skill drain, that's kind of fine. You can play something else instead. Uh, you can play like, I don't know. There, I mean, there is. I can't really think of like one good one of. You can play. Do, 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 do. Uh, even the second manifestation would be slightly better, honestly. Yeah. Apart from that, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really sure, honestly. But yeah. Uh, three compose because it's like just a good trap. I mean, there's nothing too interesting to say about Compulse. I mean, you can use it on yourself, but the thing is still Quiltus bounces back her Faker as a cost, so I don't know how, like, relevant that would be. And yeah, I know you can main deck Judgment, but like, look at the amount of traps that we're playing. I mean, I'm playing even less traps in this deck than I'm playing in Cyber Dragon, so you don't really need Judgment. I mean, you're playing, like, a lot of cards that can be activated from your hand, Feels like it's really easy to play around Judgment. Like, this deck doesn't lose to Judge. Uh, uh, sorry. Play around uh, uh, Evenly and Lightning Storm. Like, these cards, you don't really care about them because you don't always have to set, like, too much. I mean, if you have Faker and Hand Traps, then you can literally just set one, and that's already enough because that can be, like, three interruptions single-handedly. And if you get Evenly, well, while you have two cards on the field, like, <laughs> okay, sure, your opponent gave up on his battle phase and one card on his hand. And then you only lost like one interruption. That's so. That's kind of how like you uh, you gotta see it sometimes. So yeah. And then of course three spoofing and three strikes. Strike is just like the best solemn by far. Obviously, obviously. I mean, once again, I don't understand why uh, people think that judgment is uh, that good because it doesn't negate a lot of stuff. And now you might say, oh no, it negates the most amount of stuff. It negates spells, traps, monster summons. Negate monster summon, sure, just play trap hole at this point, like regular trap hole. <laughs> it's just, it literally, it does the same thing at this point. Or bottomless, or like really bad cards like these. So it's just, uh, yeah, strike at least allows you to break like established boards, and it only pays 15. And like, when are you ever negating spells or traps with judgment? Like, it, it has to be a huge blowout. If you want to pay 4k to negate one card only, and then they can use it again if it's like an only, you can only activate one per turn, so hell nah. Uh, for the extra deck, I play access code because it's like the follow-up that you do after you do the link cross play with your two tokens. I, actually, now that I think of it, I might actually have to play like another link to generic because the link cross gets you like two regular tokens, so you gotta make... Uh, I don't know, I mean, not barricade, no, not barricade, but just like any link to generic so you can just kind of link into this. Uh, or maybe you can just make Phoenix and then turn it into Link Kribo. I mean, you can't make Relinquished Anima because you can't use tokens for Anima. But you can still make Link Kribo and then... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. You can make Access Code Talker just with, like, any Altergeist plus uh, Pokuri as your follow-up. But obviously not turn 1 because uh, your your Link tokens can just not be used as uh, Link materials that turn their summon. So yeah, but remember that after that, you can. And then you're just gonna kill your opponent because Access Code Talker is, like... It's basically better than Bolt Sword in this deck, so yeah. Yeah, Unicorn Phoenix, I mean, whatever. You can also play Ningirsu. I know it's not that hard to summon, because once again, you just use, like, the Phoenix and the Link Rebo from your grave. After, like, linking off a token, then you tribute, like, the, the other token, get back Link Rebo. Then you make Ningirsu, send one, send one stuff. 
and then you can link off the Ningirsu with something. So maybe I should actually cut like one Anima or one El Mirage, actually one El Mirage, and maybe the Unicorn. So yeah, it would probably be like this for Ningirsu and like a Link 2 monster. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, you're three link cross obviously because you're playing three pot of extravagance so uh, you really don't want to banish like uh, multiple copies of these I mean you can banish two link cross obviously no problem because you only go into one but if you banish three link cross then Pokuri is useless so yeah Pokuri basically becomes Garnet uh, you don't want that obviously I mean no it not, it's not that it becomes Garnet it's just that your Hextia has to stay on the field and you can't really turn it into something right away so you can't get the immediate value but it's not the end of the world I want to say so yeah anyways that's pretty much it for the main deck and extra deck uh, for the idea section real 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 quick uh, Nibiru I mean I don't even know why it's there I might as well just play Phantasme both conflict with uh, Faker if you Faker you can't use Phantasme and Nibiru or the other way around because you can only summon Altergeist to turn Faker is summoned, not after it is summoned, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, so Sphere Mode, because, I mean, it's, since it's kind of a trap deck, you don't really mind that much, but, like, you're playing six normal summons, so once again, don't forget about that. The way you have to side out is kind of whack, honestly, sometimes, so yeah. A border for the Mirror Match? Yeah, I mean, now that Faker is a three, the Mirror Match is gonna be, like, the most annoying thing ever. It's... I am really not looking forward to this at all. Yeah, um, Claren Wishka because I actually played, this should actually be there, because I used to play Dark Renewal in my Altergeist deck when Faker was all at 1, I didn't play Altergeist that, that often because I'm not a huge, huge fan of the deck, I mean, I think, I still think this is like, very respectable tier 1.5, but like, definitely no better than that, even with 3 Faker, because it has a very, very horrible Eldritch matchup, like, by far, and also it's just, um, it's just not good enough to compete with Adamantia. Obviously, if th all those decks die, then yeah, sure. Obviously, Altergeist can be good, but no, it has a. Uh, it faces a lot of uphill battles. But Dark Renewal actually gave a lot of consistency to the deck because you can actually just turn any spellcaster that you control into Faker. And Claren Rushka, obviously, if you're playing a lot of hand shops, then going second, you just can normal summon a hand shop, turn it into Claren Rushka in Rain Phase Two. It actually has synergy with uh, Even Lee, by the way. And then, since it's a spellcaster, you, you, whenever your opponent summons a monster, normal or special, you can just send it to the grave alongside your spellcaster and then summon Faker from deck, from deck or grave. So that's actually sick. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you don't have to do that anymore because Faker's a 3, so the deck is so much more consistent that even Sangan and stuff like that really don't have to be played. Uh, Lightning Storm and Mystic Might, I really have no idea why they're here. Obviously, you would never want to main deck Lightning Storm, but you could actually main deck... Um, Demise of the Land and Metaverse. So actually, maybe that could be something instead of the Skildrin, because obviously, Skildrin with one protocol... Oh, wow, actually, <laughs> I actually removed it. Skildrin with one protocol, yeah, sure, maybe it's... Uh, it might just not be enough. I still think it's, like, okay, but... Yeah, whatever. So, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the rest is, like, very, very just random and has no reason to be explained but anyways that is pretty much all i had to say for my deck pro profile so obviously if you have any more comments or feedback or whatever just let me know in the comment section below and uh, once again don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot and yeah thank you very much for watching and it is your boy yasin signing out to peace